smooth edged all the way across, seamless. I'm now done with the outer case itself. I've showed you building all the pieces to that, how to attach the rear reducer, building the front end uh, retaining clip and the reducer that goes on the front end itself. We're able to hinge that to get to our engine. I've got to build a few ribs that are going on the top and the bottom of this and some mounting brackets to hold the engine down itself. For the most part, our engine housing is ready to go. We can now start working on that part of it. Real quick here, let me go ahead and just shut it all up so you can see what it looks like. Squeeze that down in the back, squeeze that down in the front. It's nice and tight, so it's gonna take me just a second to get it on there, there we go. There is the outer body to our engine. So we're ready to go with that. Now we just need to mount the engine inside of that and work on our fuel system and our oil system. Here, outside of this main construction video, I'll show you a few ways that you can make some simpler compressors that are not gonna give you much extra compression. Right now to make a turbo ramjet engine actually function pretty well with what we have, I need to double the compression that we already have from this compressor. And the way we're gonna do that is basically build another one of these, almost identical to it, that's going to have double the ratio as the size of the input this one has. So instead of having half inch lead blades as the intake blade size, we're going to have a one inch lead blade size. And instead of reducing down to one eighth inch, we're reducing down to three eighths inch. So we're doubling everything's size and volume, and we're gonna keep the exact same compression ratio. How we're gonna build that little compressor is just like this. So that's what it starts out as, just a simple flat piece. I fold a 57 degree angle. I set up the line here for the next break. I mark where I'm gonna cut that break. So I have a one inch face plate. And when I'm done with that, it looks like this. So basically you have a fold over down here, you got a fold over on that side. Those are where it's gonna to mount to the top and the bottom plate. That's where the compression is gonna take place. This one inch wide leaf here is going to come up from the center drive rod and with some pliers and stuff, I'll actually curve a little bit of a curvature to all of them when it's finally done, just to get them to scoop the air just right while mimicking the curvature that you see on the face of those blades. The outer edge is kind of curved over a bit. So we can do that with this. Next, what we're gonna to wanna to do with each one of these, is we're gonna take a flat plate, cut it in a disc, just like that, and I use two washers, just like this. I put one out in front, you can see it at the tip of my finger there. I use the flat plate, and then behind that, we have another one of those washers. So all I'm really doing is I'm cutting right here at the corner, I cut back a half inch, I make sure I make a little bit higher cut on the raised leaf edge there, so that way it's got the spacing for the washer edge to sit in there. And I push those down in between that aluminum plate and that top washer until they're sitting right up next to each other. And you gotta cut each one of them a little bit of a pie shape so they'll fit in eight of them. And once we get those all pushed into that, I'll tighten it all down. I'll drill through the bottom plate down here where we have that bottom little fold over. I'll drill through and I'll put a couple of little rivets through that to hold them down onto the bottom plate. And then up here on top, We'll basically take a ring, we'll set that down over the top of the compressor, I roll out a tube. It's gonna be a little bit higher than the height of the top of the blades here, just to give us kind of a draw and it'll feather out just a little towards the front of it. I've installed all eight blades. They're not riveted down yet. I just pushed them all in, tighten it down a bit. You can see how nice and aggressive that's gonna turn out. Put a piece of all thread all the way through this. This will be the piece that actually the drive bolt rides down through the center of that and will kind of compress it into place, probably even pin it just to keep it there due to the RPMs. Uh, real quickly here, let me zoom in so you can see the cuts I've made on each one of those blades. If it'll focus for us. You can see the little angle out cut, kind of a little L cut in the blade up there where it comes up to the top, just against the all thread. That was designed so that we got that nice front look to it right there. Just a little bit of a cap over the all thread and that'll give us a really nice high volume, high compression front compressor to our turbo ramjet engine. So let me show you just how I put this together. First of all, I found these little tiny 16th inch rivets. Not eighth inch, but actual 16th inch rivets. And you'll notice they barely stick up inside of there. They're not impeding my airflow much at all. That's how I was able to rivet the bottom plate down to those blades that I showed you. Then the top plate here was that ring I showed you. I just made a slice in it, carefully kind of brought that slice down to a bit of a cone. That way we could match the reduction in our blades here with the cone. Rolled out a ring, the right size for the, the rays in our blades, twice the height of the rays. 
and then with some L brackets just riveted to that ring and then down right into the top edge of those blades. So it's a multi-purpose rivet point right there. So there you go. This is how you can build a real compressor fan to add to your turbojet or turbo ramjet engine project. So I've got a bearing system now mounted so we can get that to spin. Let me go ahead and pull it off of there so you can see what's going on. What I have is a standoff that I built. That standoff is exactly the same distance as the edge of our compressor blade here. That way the air will flow nice and freely right off the edge of the compressor, back around. Basically we're going to use this area as the diffuser. It's going to come back around and then into our second compressor there. Uh, that should give us about 8 to 1 compression, really close to 8 to 1 compression. Here's the completed compressor now, ready to go to install on our turbo ramjet engine. A little stiff due to the brand new bushings and all the holes and everything need to be run for a moment just to get it loosened up a bit, but it's nice and centered. This will move a lot of air for us as a primary or first stage compressor and then down through the entire system down into our second stage compressor. And if there's anything extra, it's gonna come out right here into our ramjet engine. I've also installed a frame now. This frame is the beginning of the mount to hold our electric starter motor. So I'll start building some pieces to mount off of this for that motor to mount to. And we'll be able to spin this thing up to 20,000 RPMs. Just wanna give you a quick look what that compressor we just got done building now looks like attached to our turbo ramjet engine. We now have a large high volume compressor stage, a turbulator stage, and then our final second compressor stage here. This should give us all we need to really get this engine up and running. Here's the motor mount I was able to put together. I've got a block of aluminum that I drilled down into, made sure there was a spot so I could push the electric motor down into it, the screw holes to hold the electric motor to that block. And then off the block, I just drilled through for some bolts to hold onto our L brackets here. And that goes down to the end of an old electric motor that had high speed bearings in it. And the bearings were still good. So you can see the bearing right there. You can see the bushing coming right up to the underside of the bearing. So we have a bearing and a bushing up here in the front. That gives us pretty nice stability. It keeps it rigid for the long length of the drive shaft. Um, here I have a bushing to bushing contact down at the bottom with a pin going through it. You can see the end of the pin sticking out. Here you can see the pinhole that goes into the splines for the electric drive motor. Real simple, just push the pin in and we'll lock that into place. Not hard to do. Now we're ready to actually spin this. Here's a quick shot of all the pieces for the engine that we've built so far. Everything's basically done other than we need to build some mounts to hold the engine inside the case and the fuel and the oil system. Other than that, this is it. So these are all the different pieces that you would have to build to produce a turbo ramjet engine similar to what I'm showing you here. We've got our main body, you've got the intake cone there and retainer ring. We have our ramjet engine and afterburner portion here, the combustion chamber to the main turbojet, the cowling for our first stage compressor, the intake there for our second stage compressor, the final thrust reduction nozzle, we have our diffuser and our second compressor blade right there, we have our primary compressor that we built there, our electric starter motor, our drive fan and our rotor, and then our intake spike. Here's a quick shot of what it would look like if we were, let's say, at Mach 2 with an engine like this. The intake spike would be pushed all the way back into the furthest back position that it can go, and the gap between the back side of the intake spike and the reduction collar here on the intake would be very, very small. And if you notice that the reduction collar is slightly smaller in diameter and then the intake spike itself's widest points, that way the air that's coming off the spike and into the intake has to kind of deflect and reflect a few different times inside of that channel before entering into the rest of our engine. That would slow down that supersonic velocity air into a subsonic velocity high pressure air before entering the engine. Now that we've completed our engine, we need to work on the fuel, oil, and the ignition system. To start out with, we're going to add a little spark plug to start this thing up. And what I was able to find was this stainless steel nut at the local hardware store. We're going to drill a hole right there in the top of the combustion chamber. We're going to set that nut on there and weld it into place. The nut has the right threads on it for this little nitro spark plug from RC style engines. We're going to throw that right into the top, just like that. I have the nut now welded on. I've got a ground down ready to go. So all we have to do now is add our little spark plug to this. And there we go. We now have an ignition system for our turbo ramjet engine. 
Now that I've added our spark plug to the engine, we're going to need to work on our fuel system. We're going to run the fuel system with this fuel pump right here. This is a 145 PSI fuel pump from a 500 horsepower turbocharged vehicle. And the reason I'm using it is due to the 145 PSI that it generates. From the fuel pump, we're going to go into basically a fuel ring just like this. This one here is for the ramjet engine portion of it. It's going to sit right